you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So in this demonstration, we're now going to look at how we can utilize the IoT Insights Solution Engineering Develop Platform to communicate with a whole range of third-party solutions requiring access control. So this particular demonstration, we're going to show how the IoT controller communicates with the IoT Insights platform and then get out to third-party access control systems, for example, from Asa Abloy or Dorma Kaba. The, the system is basically made up of three major components. Uh, the, the first component is the controller, the IoT controller, which is performing the configuration and uh, setup of the radios on the access point that is communicating with the door locks. Then we have that is, is dealing with all of the onboarding of those door locks into the IoT control system where we're then able to monitor the basic functionality of the door lock and the data is connected and passed from the door lock through the system and out to the third party online control system. For example, as I mentioned, Vision Line from Asa Abloy and Ambiance from Dormacaba. Additionally, in there, there are third party lock systems that are dealing with the day to day operation, access control, key card management, those kind of functions, battery management. And then additionally, things like onboarding of the door lock into the back end lock system and monitoring and configuration and things like that. Additionally, on top of that, then we have our insights platform that is providing us using a combination of the API into the IoT controller, but also directly into the third party systems API. So the insights platform is communicating both directly to the IoT controller for Mac background management and other third party systems. And then it's using the APIs for from our partners to get real time updates on locks that are connected through the system. So we're able to do uh, authentication, provisioning, monitoring and logging of everything that's going on with any device that is connected within our IoT domain through directly from the IoT controller or through the access point or directly from our third party system. So here we have our PC that is running a Windows operating system that is running our third party online lock control system. So in this particular case, we're going to be running the vision line system from Asa Abloy, which is going to connect to our IoT controller and also directly into our rules engine, which we're going to use the API. So when we run our vision line software, we, uh, we can log in and I'm going to use the, uh, the default password and uh, configuration login. Uh, for this particular system. Now you can see we have all of our background status and configuration. So we can, for example, encode user keys and, and normal day-to-day -day operations that the building manager or the uh, the receptionist would use within the building to manage key cards and, and locks. We also have a whole range of lock services which are used much more for onboarding the locks. We're not going to cover that in this particular module. That's covered in our partner module. More specifically, we're going to look at useful information around debugging and monitoring what's going on within our system. So I'm going to run the system monitor here, and this gives us an overview of what's going on within our system. So we have uh, our log giving us all of our information and communication coming from our rules engine, the IoT controller, and directly into the uh, vision line system. We also have an overview of our, our current configuration. So here we have our start time, the last time that it uh, was event was logged, number of occurrences that have happened, number of doors that are currently shown as online and that door's specific number of event count. So you can see we can, uh, we can see what's going on within the vision line software uh, by looking at the log file and seeing what's going on within the, uh, the system. So for example, if I initially a door lock, uh, a door unlock event within the within the system. I can use a key card to open the door, and I'll initiate that. And you can see messages coming in now from the from the IoT controller and from the lock through the IoT controller and into the Vision Line system. So you can see the user login. You can see that there was a request that came in. You can see messages, um, etc., all coming in from devices. So here you can see a door ID of 104. There was an event code 67 at a specific date and time. And there was also what we call a registration number. So this is a key card request has been sent. So we, we're able to see messages transitioning through our network from 
the lock through the access point into the IoT controller and then into our vision line system or into our online lock system here and we're able to monitor what's going on uh, in real time. Now, in addition to looking at the log file, we can also now using the vision line software, we can actually see what's going on within uh, within the uh, event log. So now we can actually view our event log within the uh, vision line system. We can choose the specific door that we're interested in and we can open that door again. So you can see now here that we have activity within this door lock. You can see the uh, that there was a guest request the ID number of the guest card, the date and time when that request came in, and the fact that this particular guest card uh, was accepted. So this, again, if I do a door open event, and again, I request that, you'll see a notification comes in at the bottom here telling us that this is now out of date. We can refresh that list, and you'll see we now have another guest request that came in saying that the guest card was accepted. So the system is using the API to query and display that information from the vision line system up into their vision line front end. We can use that same API now within our IoT Insights platform to get that exact same information. So here we have our Insights dashboard and you can see we have our, our system configured. We have a range of devices that have been dropped into our floor plan. And then we can see all of our devices that are currently configured both on the IoT controller, but also within the within our IoT Insights platform. So if we actually look, we can see that the, if we open our device manager within our Insights and we look at our database, we can actually see, for example, if I look at all of the devices that are currently configured, we can see we have a list of all the devices that are configured, their manufacturer, the protocol, etc. So here you can see we have a door that has been configured, which is uh, from, from ASA Abloy. It's using the ASA Abloy uh, Zigbee radio and uh, its name is room 104. So again, I can open room 104 device and I can see that it's currently located in this particular location within my, my floor plan and within my building. Um, and again, this is particularly on floor number one as an example. So we could change the location or various whatever things we need to do within our environment to associate this device with a specific location. So what I can do now though, is I can actually now monitor what's going on with that device. So again, if I use my key card access and I uh, open the door lock, you'll see that the event now is coming in. So we've received a key card access on that door lock. So if I click on the event, you can see that the IoT Insights has now monitored door lock uh, on called room 104 has been opened and that a guest card access was requested and the guest card ID was uh, 100072. So we were able to, using the API between the rules engine and the vision line system, we were able to uh, instigate and read back all of the events from the vision line system and read those back into the IoT controller's rules engine and display and do something useful with it. So we can see that that was a, a guest key card access and we get the date and time of that particular event and we can see an indication on the uh, pop out window here. And again, if we wanted to, we can actually now play video and see that event happening in real time. But we can also do some other things. So because we're tied into the API, we get access to a lot of information about that specific device. So again, if I um, trigger multiple events on the on the device, you'll see we get another key card access has uh, has been requested. I can also lock and unlock the door. So if I put the deadbolt on the door now, you'll see that we get an event that comes in indicating that the deadbolt event has happened. And in addition to that, we can also, for example, unlock the door or trigger some other kind of an event from the from the door. So again, if I unlock the door, OK, we get an unlocked notification that comes in from the server. We get an update on our dashboard and our icon tells us that everything has, has indicated that that door has been uh, opened. Now, that could have been opened from the inside. Um, if there was a key card access associated with that, we would know that it's been opened from the outside. Um, and we get different notifications from the vision line based on their API that we're able to bring into into our uh, insights platform. So in this particular case now, the door has been unlocked, but it's uh, it's still closed. So what I can also do is I can open that door from the inside and I can uh, leave that door open. So now you'll see that the lock has transitioned from a unlocked position into an open position because the door has been 
uh, open from the inside without a key card access. Um, and we get that information stored. And everything that we've got here is not only being displayed on the dashboard in real time, but it's also being logged out into our database. So we get a real time uh, historical log of every single event that is going on within our building or in our, within our environment. We get a timestamp indicating when it happened. We get the event indication so we know that this was coming from a lock, but the specific event was an open event. We have the device that gave us that information, its location, and also because we've assigned a location with a camera, we also now have a video event or a video synchronized timestamp of that event with a camera. All of this information is now being stored within the, uh, the Insights platform and within the local database for us to deal with and, uh, and do whatever we want with. So here you can see after a period of time that the door now has indicated that it's transitioned from a open state to an ajar state. So the door lock has indicated that it was opened but not correctly shut. It has sent a message through the IoT controller to the back end online lock services and the server now has provided us information using the API that that door has now been left open. So again we're able to now open that event. You can see the ajar status has been notified. We get the information about everything about that specific device. So by using the API and using the, the system, we're able to now get a much better insight and overview of what's going on within our building and with uh, our online door locks and our lock system. So everything is coming through using a combination of different APIs and different interfaces, but we get all of that in a single pane of glass and a single user interface within our IoT Insights platform. And the same thing's tr true for other systems. So any additional system using vape sensors or uh, door lock systems or cameras, we're able to utilize the API within our rules engine and within our programming language to gather that information and bring it back into the dashboard and present it as in a single pane of glass. So when we actually look at what's going on within our rules engine, you can see we have a lock system and our lock system is providing us all the information that we need with what's going on and the communication. So we have a number number of flows within our rules that allow us to do a, a connection to the server. So the first thing we have here is a connection to the vision line system and we uh, set up a, a session to connect where we're given encryption keys, session IDs, uh, all based on username and password authentication. The next thing we do is we actually then query using the API, we query the uh, vision line or the ambient server and we ask it for all the information about the doors that that system has onboarded within it and we gather that information and we save it within our local structure so that we're able to uh, look at that information and find out exactly which doors are online and any information about those doors within the uh, within the system so here we can go in and we can look at the doors we can see the door that's been on board we can see its id and any other information that we need about that door and again we can refresh that query the data and refresh the information from the vision line server and get the information about that room. So once we've got the uh, the door information, the next thing we can do is we can set up a session connection to the um, to the vision line server, where we're going to now, in the same way that we did with the refresh button on the vision line dashboard, we can query the controller whenever there's an event change, and whenever we see an event change, which is happening down here, we will forward that into our flow to display on the dashboard. So here we are, basically waiting now for the vision line server to tell us there's been a state change. So for example, I'll go ahead now and shut the door, and when we shut the door we'll see that the uh, the response comes in and you can see it flicker as the uh, as the message happens. And again, if I switch on a debug window, we can actually now query and see that message coming in. So I'll instigate an open door with a key card. There we go, we've opened our door and you see the message comes from the vision line server telling us everything that we need to know about that event. So we can see we have a, a list of information about the event. We can see the door ID, the event code, the time that that happened, because this was a key card access, a guest card access, we also get the information about that key card access request. So we have all the information we need coming back from a few flows or a few lines within our rules engine that we're then able to process within our IoT controllers dashboard and within our IoT Insights uh, interface.
So that completes everything we need to know now to be able to use the combination of the API with online lock services to gather information about devices and door locks and bring that information out to our in Insights platform and into our dashboard. Thank you.